Okay guys, our next step is to prepare our flight controller for connecting everything. We're going to connect the wires from the speed controllers to the board. Um, the first step to this is going to be to tin the pads. Alright guys, guys you're going to want to tin these tabs right here. You have one, two, three, four big ones on the back and you've got two smaller ones in between. Same thing on the front of the board. You can tell the front of the board by the arrow, just in case. Front of the board, same thing. You've got two big ones and two big ones over here, two small ones in between. So the first thing you want to do is go ahead and tin your first wires. These big ones are your battery wires for your ESCs. They're your hot and your ground. And your center one is for your signal wire. We'll talk about that a little bit later. So you're going to want to go ahead and tin these. You guys be really careful when you tin these wires. You don't want any of this to bridge over. It will cause a short. And as I have learned from experience, this may cause fire. So be very careful. Okay guys, so you can see right there, this is how it should look with your motor wires and your signal wires for your ESCs. These are all tinned. Next step we want to do is go ahead and tin for our VTX, our receiver, and our camera. Our camera wires are up here. There's three, three pads right here. We want to go ahead and tin those as well. Yeah, we'll need to cut a diagram into this. We have one for the manufacturer, I can send you. Now back here on the back of the board, we're wanting to use the three pads on the left. All right. Oh, yeah, it's the last three. Yes. So that's gonna be your VTX signal, VTX power, and VTX ground. What is the VTX? The VTX is the video transmitter. It takes the signal from the camera and transmits it to your goggles. Okay, guys. This is how your board should look. Now we're going to flip the board over on the back side. This is where we'll tin for our um, receiver and our battery input. So over here on the back side of the board, we'll use, over here we have S-Bus, which is what we're going to be using. So we're using S-Bus, 5 volt and the crown. We're going to skip that. So we're going to use S bus right here. We're going to go ahead and tin it. We're going to skip the satellite. We don't need that one. And we're going to go over here to five volts. And we're going to tin it. And our ground. Okay, once we've got that done, we're going to do, this is our battery. This is where the power comes into the quadcopter at. And same as before, we're just going to go ahead and tin it. All right, the board's tinned. Okay, so your finished product on the top, you will have uh, four leads on each side for the motors, two for signal. On the back side, it will be the same. You will have your three for the camera and three for the VTX back here. And on the underside, you have battery, positive and negative. And then for your receiver, up here, give you a little better view of that. And we will also include a diagram with this video 
that you can refer to. It's from the manufacturer and it's extremely helpful. I would recommend double checking that. We're going to go ahead next and put our battery leads on. Um, our wires on this one is a little bit stiffer than what you guys will have, but um, it all goes together the same way. So what you're going to want to do is to make sure your board, you have the front of the quadcopter. This is where we're starting getting into the front and the rear of the quad. Um, the way we went by front was going by the grooves on the chassis plate. It's like an arrow, so we're going to use that as a front. Same thing with flight control. We have an arrow pointing forward, so our flight controller is pointing toward the front of the quadcopter. All right, we're gonna go ahead and flip that over. Well, before we do that, right here is where you connect to the laptop. So to update your firmware, your um, PDIs or PIDs, um, we want your battery on the opposite side of that. That way you have no interfere, you don't have any problems with that. So make sure when you put your battery leads on, it ends up being on the opposite side. So we're gonna flip this over to our battery lead, which is right here. And we'll be going out this way. We're gonna go ahead and solder our positive lead onto first. Alright guys, so the way the Mach 1 frame is, everything's laid out, you're going to have to run your battery wires out the rear, which will just be straight back. You're going to want them maybe in about two inches long on the wires. That way you've got plenty of room for it to slide down right there. We're going to slide the frame to the side for a little bit. Next we're going to go ahead and have the flight controller upside down once again. And we're going to go ahead and get our receiver wires ready and get all those soldered up. So let's get on that. All right, guys, we're going to go ahead and get this soldered up. Um, we'll have to go to get some wire. Unfortunately, it doesn't come with wire. Um, you'll want to have that about two inches long. What we're going to do is we're going to solder the wires on the bottom of the flight controller and they will wrap around up to here, which is where a receiver will sit, somewhere up here. That's why we're gonna leave it a little bit long until we get everything figured out. So the first thing we're gonna do is strip three wires, preferably red, black, and yellow, or red, black, and yellow color. Just remember that the yellow or whatever the third color you use is gonna be your signal. Black will be your ground, and red will be your power. Okay, so with your receiver facing up, you'll see a small QR code. Let me zoom in for you. This is a very small receiver, so it's hard to see. This square pad to the left, this is gonna be for your signal. Center is power, and on the outside is your ground. So first we'll solder up the signal wire. You're not going to tin these because of the small holes. So you'll just twist the wire, place it inside the hole. Now kind of bend that outward. This is where it helps to have someone else. for me. Have someone hold the wire in place. Okay. Pull it out just a little. Hmm? Pull it out just a little. Now you do want to have a little bit of wire exposed to where you can solder onto. And you'll just touch the pad, touch a dab of solder to it. It doesn't take much for these as small as they are. And you're done. Double check your connection. Move on to the next one. Center is going to be your red. That's your power.
Can you sign it right there? Yep. And another good tip, always clean your soldering iron. A uh, good clean tip will be a lot easier to solder with. You won't have to worry about bridging. That's it. Okay. Now we'll move on to our ground wire. This will be the last one. And double awesome. check connections. That's it. It should look like this, guys. Okay, so with the QR code on top, you should have yellow, red, and black. Next step is going to be to solder the receiver onto the board. As Chad said before, about two inches is optimal. I'll let him cut that. Okay, it might be an inch and a half, but still. Close enough. Close enough. <clears throat> okay, so next you're gonna strip this end of the wire. Now these will, in, this end will be tin because they're going on pads instead of in holes. So like we showed you before, soldering iron on the end of the wire solder on the side that will allow the solder to be drawn into the wire and it will go throughout the entire length of the exposed wire all right Alright next, we're going to take our signal wire, the yellow wire in our case, and we're going to attach it to the first pad, which says S-Bus. Just a little bit. Like I said, where the wires is already tinned, you don't really need to add solder, everything's already there. Give it a slight tug, make sure everything's good. Now our next wire, we're going to go ahead and do our power wire, which is 5 volts. And that is on your next pad down. No, six satellites next. The next pad down that is tinned. We're going to skip satellite. All right, slight tug. And last, we're going to do our ground. We're just going to repeat the steps. Do you need me to hold the board? No. Give it a slight tug. And there you are. Okay. And now that we have everything on the bottom side finished, we can go ahead and place the board onto the copter. Just slides over the standoffs like so. Make sure your arrow is facing the front of the quadcopter. 